Good afternoon, everybody. So you ever been working in your PDM vault and you get a data card that has a ton of controls on it and you want to know exactly how many controls are on it and what all variable names are being used on that card? Today's Q-tip is for you. We've got a really cool Q-tip today for you. So we just want to go through quickly, how do we find all of the variable names that are in use on my data card? Why, you might ask? Here's why. If I ever have a field that's like a keyword search field and I have an input formula and I want to enter all the variables on that data card quickly without having to search through all these fields and all these tabs, all the various places on this data card that's very complex, this is the way you do that. Bear with me. We're going to go through it quickly and we can provide the query so that you guys know how to do it. But you, you're going to need to do this in your SQL server. So let's jump over there. But before we do, let's take note that we're in the card editor in our vault is called demo PDM. The card is called EQ CAD card. All right, let's keep that in mind. Jump over to SQL Server. So if I put in this brief little query, it's going to return me this result. And so it's going to have the card ID, card name, and path. All right, you're going to need some of these. The reason why we have the path is in case you have two cards named the same name in two different folders in your vault. And that is possible, and it's, it's very handy to have that. But anyway, that's why we've got that in there. All right, we're looking for the one that says EQ CAD card. It's usually going to be for us at the top level of our vault. And then if we go down any further, that's usually because we're managing the card data at a project level or folder level. All right, so if I look through here, I see one EQ CAD card. Let me just go ahead and sort this ascending. And if I look through here, I'll, I'll notice that we have EQ CAD card, but we don't doesn't look like we have any others that are called EQ CAD card. That right there tells me exactly what I need to know. Now let's skip forward and get all the variables. I've got that down here below. Ta-da! I've got that commented out. Let's go ahead and uncomment that. Bring that code section up a little bit closer to the top. And we have our entire query. And then we're going to select variable name from the card controls and we're going to give that an alias of CC and then we're going to enter join cards, enter join variable where the card ID is this name. Now, I've set mine to look by path, but let's go ahead and change that a little bit. We're going to grab this query up top and inject it down below. It's going to make a subquery. And I'm going to say where C card name equals EQ CAD card. Now, this should return me all the variables from the card controls that that means card control is basically a, a control which is a uh, component on your data card itself like a pull down list a calendar field a, an edit box drop list any of those those are tabs uh, but some of them have no con no variable tied to them because it's just like a label well, a label won't have a variable tied to it and a tab control won't either um, there's other there's other functions in there like these variables that are actually tied to fields on the data card or controls on the data card. Okay, then we've, we've borrowed this query. This is not going to be a subquery of getting the variable names. Let's just run this section right here. And I've got an error because I, I actually returned multiple rows here. I didn't mean to actually do that. All right, now let's run that again. All right, you'll notice that we have variable name and there's no variable. That's what that's what I was talking about earlier. That those could be tab controls, labels, uh, images, anything that doesn't isn't isn't tied to a variable. But then if you slide down through the list, these are the variable names that are down here. Okay, now let's. This is where the interesting part is. Let's take this variable list and actually apply it to an input formula, so that I'm just going to grab all of the fields on the data card, making a huge long query string so that my search fields in my data card actually turns into like Google. All right, let's grab these. We're gonna remove duplicates first because we do have duplicates and that's pretty common. We're gonna open up Excel, fire up a quick Excel spreadsheet just like everybody does. Excel is our friend when this is all you're doing. Don't use it for your ECOs. <laughs> I had to throw that in there. Okay, now we have all the variables loaded up into Excel and there looks to be about 55 but we know we have some duplicates in there. To get rid of duplicates in Excel, we can do it like the old fashioned way of, of actually putting in a formula and, and, and actually running it to uh, get rid of those duplicates. But there's also something that's built in there now that's a, a default tool. All right, so if we go to data 
and then we go to remove duplicates and it's going to look in column A, select all, and then bingo, there we go, got rid of nine duplicates. All right, now we have these copied out. Let's, let's do something, let's move that out of the way so you can see them. We're gonna copy those, right click, copy, and then in a new sheet, we're going to paste them transposed so that it takes it from one column and splits it into multiple columns. Then we go down to paste, transpose and you'll notice it puts it out all the way out this way. From here we need to copy this and paste it into notepad and replace the delimiters. All right so we're going to copy that, fire up notepad, paste it in here. You'll notice that in each in between each variable there is a long space and that and you'll notice that when I move one character key it just jumps that entire distance. That's a tab. All right so let's go ahead and grab that tab I'm just going to do control C or I'm just going to copy it. Then I'm going to highlight all and I'm going to do a find. Whoops. I'm going to do a replace. Excuse me. I was going to say find and replace, but it's control H. I use the keyboard a lot. Replace. I'm going to paste in the tab and then down here, I'm going to put in 2% signs because inside the input formula that we're going to build in just a moment, each variable is surrounded by percent. So it'd be like having bookends. I've got the variable and then on the end I've got percent percent. And so if you'll to kind of cast that forward, extrapolate a little bit more, you'll notice that each one of these variables now has a tab in between which needs to be replaced by two of the uh, two of the percent signs. And then we'll just have to add the percent signs on the end. So we will do replace all. And now that's starting to look a lot better. The reason why we use percents inside the input formula is because it's not a comma, it's not a semicolon that separates them on, in the input form, formula that makes them the variables. It's a percent sign. It's surrounded just like you do inside the template uh, when you're setting up your templates in PDM. So at the beginning, we'll do a percent there. And then at the end, we will do a percent here. There, we can now do control all or control A, and then we're going to, or basically select all. Copy, get over to our data card. Now here, we've got it in our clipboard, so we want to add a keyword search field so that it has an input formula so that anytime any one of these variables changes, the whole string gets updated. It doesn't get replaced, it doesn't get added to it, just replace, or excuse me, it does replace the entire string. It doesn't replace piece parts. It just replaces the entire string with every variable on the data card. All right, so we'll click that down here. Drop in a field, it's an edit box. And we're going to go down and we're going to use the we're going to use the variable called keyword all. That's our favorite one to use around here. Bring that out here wide so you can take a good long look at it. And then use the three dot or four dots on the button down here and bring that up into a separate box. And then we're going to paste it right here. You'll notice that whenever I pasted that, it just filled it all up with these button looking things. And then if I were to just type like the, uh, the EXT variable, if I were to just type EXT, it's not special, it's just text. If I were to put it in square brackets, you'll notice it's not special, it's just text. But if I put a percent sign around it, percent and then percent, it changes it into that special character which makes it get the variable value. So that's why we actually did that exercise over here in Notepad. Okay, when the data card changes, you'll notice this field will actually update every time. So let's go test it. Let me move this field file name right out of the way just for grins. This is just one of our data cards that we like to tinker with. We're going to save that out. Then we're going to go over to PDM. We're in the demo PDM vault and then go down to the EQCAD folder. It's under just at the root level of the vault. So we can actually go to any folder and get this uh, to be able to test this. So demo PDM, EquivoQ and products and we'll go to APF. Let's go to the data card. Go here and click on this drawing and you'll notice that we have the keyword all field down here. I didn't put a label on it and that's fine. That's all right. We don't really need it right now but what I want you to notice is when I, I'm going to check it out and when I change a value on the data card that field's going to automatically populate with all the rest of the data. Let's see yeah let's do one two three four. You'll notice what it's doing is it's actually stuffing in all of that data. But you'll notice also, it's running it all together. 
we actually want to separate this with spaces. So let's go back to the data card. And instead of pasting in the keyword all with here like this, we're going to put spaces in there. Let's go back over here to our notepad, handy dandy notepad. And we're going to do control A for selecting it all. And we're going to do that replace again, edit. And we're going to replace. And this time we're going to replace 2% with a percent space in between. All right, that'll give us the spaces that we need. That way every variable is separated with the space. All right, now let's copy that out. Put that in our input formula and delete out what we had in there before and paste it in there. That is going to help us to do the keyword searching just like you would with Google. It'll help your entire vault to turn it into Google. So if any, any variable name is in here like this, it'll find it. And it'll be associated with every file that has the data card that has the keyword all field populated. All right, let's go back here. I don't want to save it this time. Click off, click back on. It's still checked out to us, so we're going to go ahead and update this again. And we're going to do two, three. You'll notice that it now has all that data stored in this field. Long story short, we've searched the database for card variables that are stored on the data card, removed the duplicates, and copied all the names from there into Notepad, turned that into a searchable keyword searchable field so we can use it in an, as an input formula, and then pasted it into the input formula inside the data card, and then we see a practical application of how that can be used. I hope today's Q-tips have been helpful for you. Thanks for watching and believe in the queue.